Now, I don't know if any of you have been following this. I feel like this is a little bit of a different video on this channel uh, than what I would cover, but uh, I thought it was, it's pretty interesting. The, uh, you know, if you've been following the prices of fast food, McDonald's, Wendy's, Arby's, you know, all these things, generally people's knee-jerk reaction is like, oh, I don't eat that junk anymore, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I get that, but a lot of people do. You know, sometimes you only have 30 minutes for lunch. You don't want to pack. Lots of people still eat fast food. And to be honest with you, there's fast food that isn't necessarily terrible for you. If you're smart when you go there, uh, you know, you pick your sandwich as well. You get water or something like that to drink instead of, um, you know, you know, whatever the case is. Basically, everyone still will eat fast food from time to time. Over the past couple of years, the prices at fast, at fast food has been getting absolutely insane, out of control. And, uh, you know, now Wendy's says it's going to ex experiment with surge pricing, meaning if you show up at Wendy's during a busier time of the day, just like an Uber, they're going to charge customers more money for their burgers. The same burger you get an hour previously, but because you get a lunch break when everyone else gets a lunch break, you get to pay more for it. It's absolute insanity. And we're going to get into that right after a quick word from this video's sponsor, Fume. Cold turkey might be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or something like that. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. They look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural delicious flavors. And they are, I legit love this orange vanilla. You get it, instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit where you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural guilt-free way. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and it's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. Gives your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking your habits. And believe me, this thing is flipping around in my hand constantly. Base was launched in January. It's a way to stand to rest your fume when it's not in use with a magnet inside that keeps fume attached. The device can be spun around on it, which is also good for fidgeting, of course. I wasn't sure what to expect, to be honest with you, but uh, I'm absolutely loving the variety and the experience. And uh, well, for me, just kind of fidgeting with this thing in my hand helps me kind of de-stress in a way. And look at all these different flavors I have. I mean, there's it's endless possibilities. Stopping is something we've all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com com slash quartering or scan the QR code and use code quartering to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code quartering to save an additional 10% off your order today. Wendy ex Wendy's explores bringing Uber style pricing to its fast food restaurants. Patrons of Wendy's may soon be paying varying prices for their burgers as the fast food chain intends to bring Uber-like surge pricing to its menu. As early as 2025, we plan to test a number of features such as AI-enabled menu changes and suggestive selling based on factors such as weather. We think it will provide great value in an improved customer and crew experience, a Wendy's spokesperson said to CBS News in an email. Now look, I get it. Hey, it's cold and rainy outside. You want to push the chili? I get that. It's hot and sweltering outside. You want to push the Frosties? Okay, cool. However, the strategy also involves so-called dynamic pricing. Now, there's a lot of people out there 
that might think, hey, I'm going to get a good deal. I'm going to eat dinner at 2 o'clock. You know, shout out. Ever since I started intermittent fasting, I eat dinner at 3 o'clock. The problem is it's not going to be cheaper than normal at 3 o'clock. It's just going to be more expensive at 4 or 5 o'clock. So even if you eat there at a regularly scheduled time, it's going to be the same price. They're not giving you a discount to eat at 2 o'clock. They're just jacking the prices whenever it's convenient for them to do so, whenever they say there is some sort of surge. When do you start to reassume customers, or reassure, I think this is a typo, by saying the new technology would be used to offer discounts and not hike prices when demand is high? Bull-oni. bull Everybody knows the only sandwich to get at Wendy's is the spicy chicken. That's the only thing anybody gets at Wendy's. Everything else garbage tier. But we said these menu boards would give us more flexibility to change the display of featured items. This was misconstrued by some media reports as an intent to raise the prices when demand is high at our restaurants. Let me be very clear. That's what they were going to do in my opinion. That's what they were going to do. They floated it. Everybody ruthlessly dunked on them on Twitter and elsewhere. And so they backtracked it. They they were absolutely positively going to do this. There's no doubt in my mind. Wendy's CEO, Kirk Tanner, told an earnings call earlier this month that Wendy's is investing $20 million to roll out digital menu boards across all U.S. company operator restaurants by the end of 2025. Fine. You know, fine. Quote, beginning in its early 2025, we will begin testing more enhanced features like dynamic pricing and day part offerings along with AI-enabled menu changes and suggestive selling. As we continue to show the benefit of this technology in our company operated restaurants, franchi- franchisee interest in digital menu boards should increase, further supporting sales and profit going across the system. Well, here's the reality. He says here, the spokesperson for Dublin, Ohio based burger chain said that Wendy's investment in technology will give it flexibility to change the menu more easily, helping to drive traffic and providing value during slower parts of the day. Such features are also increasingly important as fast food customers place orders online or through apps. This has been around in a few industries already, but in the context of fast food, it's a new development and is pushing technology to a new place. Surge pricing is uncommon, but not unprecedented in the food and beverage industry. It was adopted by Britain's biggest pub company, Stonegate Group, which in fall began charging 25 cents more for a pint on weekends and evenings at about eight o'clock, at about 800, sorry, of the 4,000 pubs it operates. In theory, charging more for food at high traffic times could help cover the added cost of having to bring additional staff during peak hours. Well, that's not how they're going to use it. Who the heck thinks that's how they're going to use it? You may end up with these surge moments when prices are higher and customers wish for the day of fixed prices. You just knew what you were going to eat. Uh, and if you just knew what you're going to eat, offered Saranvik, there's a certain amount of irritation after growing up in a world where the price is the price, and then you jump into this environment. Airlines are a prime example of dynamic pricing. Well, let's just look at the fast food industry. You know, uh, the fast food in- industry in in general, you know, the price hikes are getting insane. Look no further than the fast food drive through for evidence of inflation fatigue. Food companies have been passing along higher labor and ingredient costs to consumers long after inflation peaked at 9.1% back in June of 2022. Diners are getting fed up, eating less fast food, and griping on social media that their go-to cheap meals aren't so cheap anymore. Sales show, I mean sales show it, McDonald's reported underwhelming results in the fourth quarter and Yum! Brands showed weaker than expected growth in its top brands, which are KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut. Fast food executives are taking note. McDonald's CEO Chris Don't Care told analysts Monday that consumers are becoming more discriminating with their dollars. Well, gee, I wonder why. 
you're getting to the point now where fast food, like fast food is so expensive that people are just better off, you know, paying for their, uh, building at home, you know, and, and bringing it to work or not eating lunch and eating when you get home. Consumers, no, uh, consumers earning 45K or less annually were favoring comparatively cheaper groceries over McDonald's, opting to cook their own meals more often. Eating at home has become more affordable. Yeah, and what's wild about that is people are getting pounded at the grocery store too. People are getting hammered at the grocery store too. Everything's just as expensive there. Things are getting out of control. I mean, the idea that these idiots would, I mean, look, you see this inflation is still on the menu at McDonald's and other fast food chains. The problem is McDonald's was never supposed to be paying their employees 25 bucks an hour. That's for one. For two, the cost of everything else keeps going up because, you know, we're building back better and all that. Many prices at restaurants and other food service companies have climbed 5.4% climbed 5 in October. When compared with the year earlier, the number of U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics show that above, that's above overall inflation, which stood at 3.2%. Some of the steepest price hikes occurred at fast food restaurants, where prices at limited services restaurants were up 6.2% over the past year. McDonald's declined to comment, but the Burger Giant's executives acknowledged its pricier offerings in a late October call. Our average pricing level in the United States for the full year will be just over 10%. Increased, I assume. McDonald's costier menus have been met with a drop in business from low-income customers, which would say is 45 k and under, and was negative from an industry standpoint. Well, yeah. You know, you have, you know, three viral videos showing a $16.10 receipt for a limited edition smoky double quarter pounder BLT with fries and a Sprite. One YouTube video inaccurately calling it a Big Mac meal. Still another image of a Big Mac meal combo that cost $17.59 at Connecticut also fueled online outrage. So they're saying, oh, it's the meat. It's the people who are complaining that it's the problem. I mean, I don't know about you, but. If you just go, you know, go to McDonald's and look at the prices. I went there to get my wife a uh, shamrock shake the other day because she's always liked them, and I was just looking at, you know, the prices of extra value meals six, seven, eight bucks. By the time you're out of there, plus they want you to order through their app so they can advertise to you. Like use our app, use this, use this, so we can sell your data. We want more money. Still had a 14-year-old behind the counter who didn't know what the heck was going on. It's so wild. You know, and then this idea that we're going to have surge pricing at Wendy's. I will, yes, please, I will only eat the highest priced Baconator. Now, Wendy's, of course, has tried to you know, walk this back, but make no mistake about it. Not only is this coming but that's what they wanted to do in the first place they were just floating it out there seeing what consumer reaction would be they just wanted to see if we, if we would accept it now thankfully it was rejected soundly but insane to think of what happened what's happened to fast food and of course yet another thing affecting the middle class you know, middle class people are the people that eat the most fast food, right? Because a lot of them have to work two freaking jobs, okay? And now you're sticking it to them with, you know, high gas prices, high grocery prices, high fast food prices. Hopefully they'll remember that in November.